Good morning from Epcot Center. It is a busy day here. It is about 1030 and the park actually opened up at like 830 this morning and people are still coming right now and it's going to be a real busy day for sure. Oh, there's a pass holder line over here. All right, let's do it. Ooh, that annual pass holder line actually worked out fantastically. So right now, two of the passes are blocked out. I have an IncrediPass, so I am able to come in, but there are annual passes that are blocked out right now, so that annual pass holder line was not very long at all. So I just zoomed right in. It was great. The Pirate Pass and the Pixie Dust Pass are blocked out. The IncrediPass and the Sorcerer Pass are able to come in today. So that's why that line was so short. I wanna to try to get on, I thought maybe Spaceship Earth would be like a short wait right now. It looks like it's not going to be. I'm gonna check and see what the Genie Plus says as far as like a return time for a few things. Seems like it's gonna be a busy day though. 45 minute wait for Spaceship Earth. My goodness. So from Spaceship Earth, I wanted to point out something that's completely new to me is that this walkway down here is open. The last time that I was here, we used to have to go around this guest services building, which is now closed and they've moved guest services. And the sign that I saw said that it was over here somewhere. So I'm assuming maybe inside of pin traders we'll find out before we leave today where exactly guest services is but this is this was not open you just have to go behind it back by guardians of the galaxy cosmic rewind and right now we're headed down near connections cafe so this map kind of shows it it's actually kind of a confusing map because the monorail beam is here this is what this dotted line is but we used to have to go this way over by this is guardians of the galaxy cosmic rewind you can see and this is just a sticker saying coming soon so this map will be up when Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind opens on May 27th. But right now you have to go around. This is Connections Cafe. This is uh, the creation shop. So right now you have to go down and through here to get back to Guardians of the Galaxy. Whereas before we would just like walk this way next to it. So we are now walking past the front entrance of Connections Cafe and it looks like it is about to open. Like everything is ready to go. We don't have an opening date for it yet, but we did get a look at the menu. So like we've said in a few past videos, this is gonna be the new location for the Starbucks. Looks like there's some black curtains up right now, so we can't really see inside. We can see that there are lights on in there, like these green lights over here. And I, from what I've seen from like, if you're going on the monorail, you can look inside of here at some points and you can see that they have most of the things in there, like all the tables are in and things like that. So right over here, across from the front entrance of Creations, there is another entrance to Connections Cafe. And like I said, you can see inside there, they got lights on and I feel like they are about ready to go uh, and they're gonna be opening up any day now. So there are a lot of things on the menu that I'm very excited for, but the first thing that I wanted to point out is on Disney's website, they have like a description of it and it says, take your taste buds on a tour around the world with dishes inspired by Italian, French, and Asian cuisines. But then under the like description, it says, American quick service fast casual, which I thought was very funny. It does make sense though, because America is kind of like a melting pot, but I wanted to kind of describe some of the burgers that I'm very excited for. For example, the Southwestern burger, gourmet beef blend, roasted corn chipotle salsa, Oaxaca cheese crema, chamoy, guacamole spread on a toasted bun. Sounds delicious. They have a classic American burger. They have a banh mi burger, miso marinated gourmet beef blend, pickled vegetables, sriracha mayonnaise on a soft sub roll. That sounds good. Also the Mediterranean burger, gourmet beef blend, shredded lettuce, pickled vegetable, and feta relish, xiong mayonnaise, and house-made Donner bread, which I don't know what Donner bread is, but it sounds interesting. They also have pizzas, salad. They also have a vegetarian meal. Oh, it looks like it might be vegan too, because it says plant-based mozzarella and yogurt in quotes. So this is the curry spice pizza, tikka masala, carrot, potato, peas, tomato, plant-based mozzarella, lime yogurt, served with Mediterranean side salad. So kind of a lot of options. It looks like it's gonna be delicious and it looks like it'll be a little bit elevated from other quick service restaurants around Epcot, with the exception of Regal Eagle, because I think Regal Eagle is a little bit elevated too. And so now we just went through the breezeway in between Connections Cafe and Creation Shop, and we're headed over towards Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and look, there's Daisy on the side of the pathway. She has a little fence around her. So we do have an opening day for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and that is May 27th. And we have a height restriction of 42 inches. So if you are 42 inches or smaller, I'm sorry, you won't be able to ride this because it will be a roller coaster based attraction. So although we do have May 27th as an opening date, we did get an email as an annual pass holder saying, get ready. 
There are going to be annual pass holder previews. We don't have a date for that yet. And sorry, got that one wrong, Tim. This morning they released the dates and opened up registration for both DVC and annual pass holder preview of Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And the dates are May 9th through May 18th. I feel like it will be towards the end of April, maybe beginning of May, because they just started doing cast member previews. So right now, today probably, there might be cast members inside riding this ride as we speak. So people are getting to experience it, just not guests yet. Kind of a cool view. I can't wait till the walls come down so we can get the full breadth of this entrance. So another thing that was announced was the play pavilion and we don't have any more information on that. This was supposed to be like an indoor play area, a lot of interactive elements, kind of geared towards uh, older than toddler, but younger than tween. I don't know, I don't know what's happening with it. It is still behind walls, but they did sort of like put a planter right in front of it. So I don't know what is happening. There's still a walkway though. Like the walkway would be over here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll get an announcement about this at D23 this year, which is going to be September 9th through 11th. So stay tuned for hopefully some announcements about things like the play pavilion. Another thing I wanted to point out, oh, monorail. Another thing I wanted to point out is this is the entrance to Guardians of the Galaxy, but this large blue building back there is the show building for Guardians of the Galaxy. And the whole reason that I want to point it out is because you see this like ramp up right here. That is the launch hill. So this is a launched coaster. It is a backwards launching coaster that goes from the Q building up into the show building back there. Ooh, you know that it's gonna be a busy day here when you come over to Mission Space and orange side is 60 minutes. Also, somebody just passing by was like, let's just do green side. It's only 20 minutes, whatever green means. So if you're not sure what green means or if you don't know what green means, green is a tamer version of this ride. Orange is a little bit more uh, intense. So the way that this works is through centripetal force, they simulate G-forces. So it simulates a rocket launch and the green side doesn't use centripetal force. So the orange side spins, you kind of press you against your seat and that makes you feel like you are taking off in a rocket, whereas the green side just kind of tilts back so that you're using your own weight to feel like you're taking off in a rocket. It is not uncommon for people to get sick coming off the orange side. So if you are prone to motion sickness and you can't do spinning rides, I would stay away from the orange side. So now we're headed back through the breezeway between connections and creative. <laughs> Gonna, it's gonna get confusing. So we're headed back through the breezeway between Connections Cafe and Creation Shop. We're gonna head into Creation Shop, see if there's any new merch or any merch that's come back that was like part of the original Epcot release. Cause I did hear that the backpack might be back. I don't know, we'll check it out. And then we're gonna head over towards like the land to see if we can get on the land. They have some Epcot stuff that I haven't seen before. Like I like this shirt, $30. And I like that it has all of the different emblems for Epcot, including Figment and Mickey in there. And then I've never seen this shirt. It's like an embroidered design that's on the, <laughs> this is the design from the construction walls. This is another, this is a $37 shirt. Oh, they have some of the coach bags for the 50th in here. I never noticed this. This is nice. Like this little design here, almost looks like it's on a strap, but nothing that interests me, I think. I do like this bag. And I like this one too. I like the color of this, but I think that I like the waste pack version of that better. But I'm not seeing it anywhere. I like these colors too. Hmm. Well, they also have the ears. So these are specific to Walt Disney World. And they actually have three different sets of ears. They have one for Walt Disney World, one for Disneyland, and then I think they have one for Shanghai. Uh, so there are four different ears. There's Disney World, Disneyland, Shanghai, and Disney Paris. So from Creation Shop, we are going to head in this direction and go around this construction over here and head over to, we'll check out Figment, we'll check out the land, we'll check out the seas with Nemo and friends, see what the wait times are like. It was a 20 minute wait for Journey to Imagination, but only a 15 minute wait for Living with the Land. So I think we're gonna head over there. Gonna ride one of my favorite rides here, Living with the Land. Ooh, looks a little bit longer than 15 minutes. Maybe it'll go really fast. Oh man, it says it's a 25 minute wait now. Let's see what Lightning Lane does. All right, two seconds later, with the purchase of a Lightning Lane, we did it. $15 to ride Living with the Land. We'll see if I can get a different one right now. All right, front row. Also, we waited in line for five minutes and I made a reservation for Figment at 11.30. In, it's in like 25 minutes though. So we'll see how long it takes us to get through this ride. Oh, it's just like nice and relaxing. It makes you feel good going into Living with the Land, doesn't it? Like there's this first scene. Nice little thunderstorm here. One time, Jen and I were riding this ride together 
and I told the funniest joke right here and for the life of me I can't remember what that joke was but every time I ride this I think man I wish I could remember that joke oh, look at this little baby buffalo That's adorable when people ask me what my ideal home is it's this this house in living with the land not the actual like architecture of it but I want to live in this house I do think it's pretty wild that this is the perfect representation of a plant here in this greenhouse. Look at these orchids. Who can grow orchids like that? They're like magicians here. Look at this tiny pineapple up here. Now and into the future. How cute is that? Oh, I had no idea that bougainvillea flowers were edible. Good lord, look at this orchid. Holy cow, how do you do that? Oh, a Mickey plant. I feel like I'd like to grow a banana. I think it would do pretty good in Florida environment. I think it does pretty good in the Florida environment. Ooh, Most another of us Mickey. Are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here: wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice. Hollyhock. Sorghum. What is sorghum? Oh, an NFT. I feel like I like this version of the NFT a lot better. They just said that they serve more than 15 tons of vegetables grown in this greenhouse in restaurants around Epcot every year. I'd like to know specifically what I'm eating that's from the land. Look at these Brussels sprouts. Well, that timing worked out perfectly because my Figment Lightning Lane is available right now. So we're going to head over and ride that. Just right now, just like head, leaving the land and heading over to Figment. Over here passing by Bambi's Butterfly House and right out front, I don't know if these are escaped butterflies or if they are just wild butterflies that are attracted to these butterfly attracting flowers, but there are tons of them out here. You don't even have to go inside the Butterfly House to see the butterflies. They're just hanging out next to Thumper, Bambi, and Flower. Oh, and Spike over here. So as soon as we get inside, I'm gonna pull out my phone and try to make one more lightning lane reservation because I will feel accomplished if we get through three rides today using lightning lane. I feel like it has been worth it. And I'm only here until like 12.30, so it's 11.30 right now. So I got another hour. We did it. Fun interesting fact, this ride has two Magic Band touch points for lightning lane. So I have to tap the second one before I can make another reservation. All right, we're headed to the Imagination Institute. Well, I tried to make one for Spaceship Earth, but it didn't quite work. It made it for 12.45, but the wait time right now is only 35 minutes, so I might just get on Spaceship Earth. Yeah, I know all about the census. It's Figment. It's about listening with your imagination. With F-I-G-M-E-N-T, you can see things differently. It's always a good time to use your imagination. Oh. Whoa! You win one Santa! Don't! We'll go to my open house instead. It's much more fun. Oh, we're supposed to be going that way. Right this way, everybody! You're turning this entire open house upside down! Upside down? Now you're talking! So, like, Figment's just a little kid, right? That's why he has, like, little kid toys. Imagination is the brain's open house! Or does he just have, like, a childlike imagination? Oh, the toilet! How's that still on us? Come on, Figment! I knew you'd get it! Cause you got a wonderful imagination! Imagination works the best when it's set free! Imagination is a blast! Head into ImageWorks, and I think they opened up a joy and sadness meet and greet over here. Or is this Baymax? What is this? Who is this? this is Vanellope over here? Oh, she's headed back to the internet. She's going in, get to the mainframe. There she goes. All right. So you can see, here it is. Vanellope meets here on the internet. That's the internet back there, right? The way that they themed this so that it fit in with the Imagination ride is that this is the Imagination Institute Tech Expo where you can meet Vanellope Von Sweets as she comes in through the link through the internet. Oh, and over here in Imagination Land, you can meet Joy. In Imagination Land, you can meet Joy. Oh, who's coming back through? Somebody coming through? Who is it? Is it gonna be Vanellope again or do you think it's gonna be Wreck-It Ralph? Oh, it's Vanellope again. She's back. 
There's Joy. How's it going, Joy? Are you having a fantastic day? Yeah? Oh, in Imagination Land. You have like a Finding Nemo Easter egg over there too. Wow, amazing. Is it okay if we take a photo together? Thank you. They also have a magic photo studio over here from Amazing Pictures where you can put yourself in like Star Wars movies and things like that. But also, looks like you could just Photoshop your photos in front of the castle during the fireworks. Or say that you met Baymax. Or the family from Coco. Or you're part of the Incredibles. Or that you met every villain ever. Oh, I like this. So we're sticking with a Pixar theme. We've got Toy Story stuff over here. And we got figment things. And then we've got turning red stuff. Still, no four town stuff. Dang. I heart earth. Recycle. Pandemonium. Panda party. This one's kind of fun. I've never seen this one. It says relax. A gigantic pocket here on the front. And then embrace your inner panda on the back. It's kind of cool. This is a medium, so this is an oversized shirt. There's also Soren merch in here. Which I've never seen. I've never seen this Soren shirt in my life. And I like it. How much is it? $30 for this Soren shirt. Oh, they have a kids version too? I didn't realize that there are specific Coca-Colas for the 50th anniversary. Like special 50th anniversary Walt Disney World bottles of Coke. Huh. Commemorative bottle together since 1971. So Coke, I guess, has been the official drink. That doesn't sound right, since 1971. As we make our way out, there's a sign here that says, visit with Mickey Mouse in the Magic Eye Theater. And the Magic Eye Theater is the old Captain EO Theater. Over here, which I thought was the, the Disney, Pixar, Disney and Pixar short film festival, but I guess you can meet Mickey in there too. So the whole reason that I have to get out of here at like 12, 12.30 is that I'm meeting some friends from high school, actually. Maybe a little high school slash college for dinner tonight. So I gotta get out and get ready for that. But I did wanna try to ride three rides. I don't know if that's gonna happen. So I might have to make the executive decision of bailing on the last lightning lane and just getting something to eat right now instead. So, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hi, Tim. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Hello. Ooh, the Purple Martins are here. Check it out, the Purple Martins are here in their Purple Martin houses. And we have a video kind of describing why the Purple Martins are important and going over some fun facts about them. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. So here at the Farmer's Feast, it is now April 12th. So on April 10th, they switched over to the springtime menu. So we've got grilled vegetable bruschetta, herb crusted spring lamb, strawberry rhubarb upside down cake. Ooh, all right, so I think I'm gonna get the lamb and the upside down cake. That sounds delicious. So this is the herb crusted spring lamb served with marble potatoes, spring vegetables, and red wine butter sauce and it costs $7.75. Pretty expensive for what you get, but it looks delicious. We also got the strawberry rhubarb upside down cake with creme fraiche whipped cream, and that costs $4.75. I'm excited for both of these. All right, right off the bat, I can tell you, this lamb smells amazing. I know I'm probably shaking the camera, but let me try to get into the actual meat of it. It is only about like one one bite really <laughs> like maybe like two or three but let's give it a try it's very fatty but the flavor is there oh that's really good i want to try it i'm going to have one of these potatoes with some of this uh bernays i think it was mm. oh man that is delicious that was red wine butter sauce oh man i want to put that all over this lamb that's where it's at how do I get more of that? I did also want to mention that whatever this herb crusting is, really good. Yeah, it was kind of like a small portion, but that was delicious. I highly suggest that. That was really good. Let's try this upside down cake. Ooh, it looks delicious. Mm, that's pretty good. It's not as like fresh of a strawberry flavor. Like it would be better if it had like gigantic strawberries on it. There are strawberries, but you can see they've been like in the refrigerator and in the cream for a while. So they're not like bright red, they're kind of pinkish. And they still have the flavor, but they would be better if they were just like the freshest strawberries on top. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good. I feel like I've had better strawberry upside down cakes, but this one's pretty, pretty okay. 
Is it pineapple too? Are there pineapples in there? Let me read the book, because this is wild looking. Oh, rhubarb. Okay, that makes sense now. The actual cake itself is very well made, like very soft and moist. And it's good, and the creme fraiche is delicious as well, but... You know when you get like a strawberry shortcake and it's that bright red strawberry? And you're like, you bite into it and you're like, oh, okay, I just ate like a fresh strawberry. That's what I want in this. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a bad dish. I just wish that the strawberry was like punchier. You know what I mean? Oh, that cream is really good. Wow. I would recommend you give this a try, but I think I wouldn't. I might try it again. I don't know. That was it. There was, there was one other dish on there that was vegetables. We'll have to try that next time we come. If we come within, the, within this menu period, let me check and see when it changes again. So it just changed a couple of days ago, and then on May 22nd, changes over to the summer solstice menu. I like that they do that though. I like that they change the menu throughout the event. That's a really neat idea. Over here by Test Track, there is a booth here that I thought was the donut box because that's what it is at normal, like all the other festivals. But right now it's the Sunshine Griddle. And this is stuff that I haven't tried yet. Corn beef brisket hash, sounds amazing. And I feel like we had that. Oh yeah, we did. We had it and it was so good. The only thing that was very strange about it was the soft poached egg. Man, I forgot all about that. I'm not gonna get it this time, but definitely the next time that we come. Man, I'm like, I remember this and I remember it being delicious. Maybe we'll try it the next time we come here. We're definitely going to try it the next time we come here. Also these fired cinnamon roll bites sound delicious. Candied bacon on it too. Hmm. As we're making our way to the front of the park, I wanted to point out that we can see inside of Connections Cafe over here, and we can see some lighting fixtures and things like that. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but I can see it. So there you have it. That was our trip out to Epcot to try to get on some rides. Uh, we made it onto two using Lightning Lane. Lightning Lane worked really well for those two rides. And then after we got off of Figment, our next Lightning Lane available was for Spaceship Earth, and that was an hour later. So. It kind of breaks down after you make it through the shorter line rides. And don't, don't even ask me about Soren. Soren was for like seven o'clock tonight. Same thing with, with Test Track. Like they're, they're just, and I couldn't even get a Ratatouille one. They're sold out for the rest of the day. So I, I, there is a market for Genie Plus. It's just hard to do. And I think the best way to do it is uh, if you're coming here, get here first thing in the morning, just start making lightning lanes and then wait in lines so like do the short lines first i think then book like you're soaring and then just ride rides in between there waiting in line and then you got a lightning lane for soaring don't have to wait very long and then hopefully you'll have enough time left in the day to book a lightning lane for like uh for test track maybe either that or buy it in the morning when you know you're going to like say epcot in the afternoon this is the one time that we had it that it was fantastic and i was able to book like a Soren lightning lane in the morning for like three o'clock in the afternoon. And then after an hour and a half, I think it was an hour and 15 minutes, I was able to book another one, even though I hadn't set foot in the park yet. And that way I could stack up. I had three lightning lanes stacked up and then I was able to get on. I think we did five rides that day. If we can find the video, we'll put a link to it in the description down below so you guys can see what I did and how it worked out for me. That way it worked out really well. But like what I tried to do today, wasn't really worth the $15. I only made it on two rides. I wasn't here for very long. If I was here for a longer day, yeah, probably would have worked great. I would have been able to get on at least three rides and then ride Grand Fiesta Tour, three Caballeros with a five minute wait, not using Lightning Lane because there is no Lightning Lane for that ride. But it still was a great day. We got on two rides. We got to look at some construction. We got to talk about new things coming. And then we also got to try a new menu at an existing booth here at Flower and Garden Festival. So. I don't know, it was a fantastic day. Nice, quick trip out here at Epcot. So with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.